Is anyone else a sucker for those crime conspiracy documentaries? This person was murdered 50 years ago, leaving no evidence behind. The police couldn't find the killer, but me and an abundance of free time in this podcast might just be able to piece it together. Well, today we're going to be taking a leaf from their book, fellow detectives. I'm CG, and this is the truth behind the death of Richard Brown. Jumped or pushed? As it stands currently, an inconclusive case, with some sleuths strongly supporting certain sides. But we come in today with no agenda, merely to present the evidence of both arguments for you to consider. Here's our menu. Firstly, to give the facts behind Brown objectively, the points both sides agree on. For this, we'll also be pulling details that come from Another Monster, a book within the monster canon story. Then, looking at the case for Pushed, adding certain interpretations of Brown's character and events. Finishing with the case for Jumped, likewise again, adding certain interpretations. Let's crack in. Jordan fades back, swoosh, and that's the game! And that's the truth, with some cheese on it. Yeah. Ain't no meatloaf between these buns. Brown was a crack detective in the Munich Police Homicide Division, generally well regarded as an officer until one day that would change his life forever. Brown had been undergoing an investigation to track down a serial killer raining havoc throughout Munich. Eventually, he finds his man, the young Stefan Jost, an alumni of the now defunct Kinderheim 511. Kinderheim being the off-books orphanage, built to turn children into weapons. After chasing the boy to a certain station, Brown ends up killing him during apprehension. This action would prove to be the turning point in Brown's life, and quite possibly the first major action that eventually leads to his death. Another monster describes it as such. Agent Brown was hailed as a hero at considerable length by the media following his feat, but it was just a single letter published in one newspaper that turned his life upside down. The anonymous letter sent by a witness of the shootout claimed that Yost had been gunned down in cold blood after he dropped his weapon and raised his hands in surrender. The police department held a public hearing and reopened the case in exchange for Richard Brown's resignation from the force, and the truth became hazy once again. During this time, Brown lost his career, his family, and was suffering a losing battle with alcoholism. We pick up again with Brown years later, as he investigates the death of Edmund Farron. In the time gap, he has come to terms with his killing of Stefan Jost, he has quit the drink, and is close to reuniting with his estranged wife and daughter. While investigating Farron, Brown begins to unearth clues over some previously unsolved murders. All these clues point to a man named Johan, a Johan that is actively isolating Hans Schuwald. Brown comes close to death more than once during this investigation, each unclear if accident or intentional. By the time Brown pieces it all together, disaster knocks on his door. Johannes. Johan takes Brown out to a bar. Brown orders coffee. After an increasingly heated discussion, Johan moves the conversation to the roof. Here, Johan reveals that Brown shot the young killer while completely sober, and has been lying to himself and others that he was intoxicated at the time. Johan muses that such a man has no right to meet his daughter again, then offers him a drink. The sirens blare outside Dr. Gillen's house. Your patient, Richard Brown, has died, found dead after a fall, surrounded by a smashed bottle of liquor. Though, the question remains. Did he jump, or was he pushed? The push argument rests on the idea that Richard was strong enough in character that Johann's manipulation didn't work. That Richard was suspicious enough of Johann to disregard his jabs and ultimately forced Johann to kill him. Let's set the stage for Mr. Brown's character, a man of strong moral character who had recently pulled himself out of alcoholism, on the precipice of reuniting with his daughter, a man whose hope and tenacity had paid off, allowing him to turn his life around. A man, despite being kicked off the force, still worked to find justice for those cases he couldn't close. To quote another monster, several police covering reporters wrote articles in defense of Richard Brown, extolling his strong sense of justice and morals, emphatically stating 
that he was no dirty, hairy figure who would kill a defenseless man, criminal or not. We won't argue around the unconfirmed details of the death of Stefan Jost. We agree with Johan that Brown did shoot the boy while sober. Regardless of other circumstances, it's a moment that Richard can hardly remember, but truly regrets. It's important to note his reasoning for shooting the boy though. In the boy, he saw, quote, true evil. If we look at Stefan Jost, he actually bears a lot of similarities to Johan himself. Both raised through Kinderheim, both described as true evil, and both, at the point of encountering Richard, guilty of so much. Remember that Richard has pieced together so much of the murders around Schuwald, giving him a strong idea that Johann certainly has a hand in them, if not the culprit himself. When asked about the unsolved cases, Richard says, it hurts. That murderer, that murderer, such and such as accomplice, is still living out there in this corrupt world we call home. This is a man who has an intense drive to find justice. Being confronted with a key suspect on a case he's working on, regardless of the mental attacks, we believe Richard would not take actions that would let Johan get away. In a sense, apprehending Johan is a redemption over the death of Jost. As previously mentioned, both men are incredibly similar. This time, Richard has the chance to take the culprit in, by the book, overcoming his regrets by catching Johan, who is essentially to him another Jost a chance to make up for the mistakes the last time he encountered someone who was true evil. Even if Johann's attack had worked so well, it's much more likely that Richard would have backslid into alcohol after taking Johann in to be questioned by police. Not once in the story does Richard allude to suicide. While rediscovering the truth of Jost's death would be jarring, we don't think it's enough to cause Richard to jump, considering having Johann right there. In the contention between his guilt and his sense of justice, we believe that the sense of justice would win out, that he wouldn't consider jumping. Therefore, the only explanation left is that Johan had to push him off. This would not be unusual since it's very likely Johan had people working on killing Richard already. The loose beam, the runaway vehicle, even at the train station, a direct copy of the attack on Dr. Gillen not a few days later. After a few failed attempts, Johan would have no qualms about getting his own hands dirty. By psychologically attacking Richard, he gained himself an opening, which he used to push Richard to his death, dropping the whiskey after him to cover it up as if he jumped. Oh, but certainly Richard drank the liquor and then drunkenly killed himself. OBJECTION! It was a bottle of rack. Richard was a whiskey man through and through, calling rack domestic junk. If he wants to fall back into alcohol, it is far more likely for him to go back to the bar and get something he actually wanted to drink, than let himself fall back into his addiction on some cheap garbage. That is our case. Richard had too strong a sense of justice and was too close to catching Johan that the rediscovery of Jost's death would not be enough to cause him to jump. It's unlikely that Richard would have fallen back into alcohol while on that roof, even more so since Johan purchased the wrong bottle. While certainly rattled by Johan, we don't think the situation could play out in a way where Richard takes his own life and lets Johan walk free. Richard was pushed. Could you make a cup of tea, please, Stephanie? The jump argument rests on the idea that Johan's confrontation on the roof was too much for Richard and caused him enough guilt to make him jump, that the murder of Jost is of that much significance to Richard. If there is one defining characteristic of Richard when we meet him in the series, it's that he's haunted by the memory of Stefan Jost. Seeing him on the street, in windows, constantly hounded by the memory of his mistake. It's what's pushed him into alcohol, distanced him from his family, and ruined his career. Throughout his therapy with Dr. Gillen, Brown still refuses to see the truth of the matter, blaming his alcoholism on the whole event. All his progress is built on the idea that he has accepted his mistakes over Jost, building on the back of a lie. When Johan brings out the truth of Jost's death, all Richard's progress is made redundant, shattering his idea of the man he had become and revealing the darkness in his own heart. Johan attacks Richard's main drive at the time, wanting to reunite with his daughter. We saw how much that meant to Richard, driving the man to tears. At the height of that emotion was when Johan struck, when it was easiest to attack. 
Throughout the story, we see that Johan is a master manipulator, turning normal people into killers, pitting people against each other, or simply breaking a person's spirit. With Richard, he came out swinging, drawing him in with more and more damning of his past actions, leading to his biggest reveal when Richard was at his most vulnerable. We don't know if Richard would drink the rack offered to him, but when pushed so hard mentally, is it unlikely that someone would reach for whatever comfort was available? While Richard claims it was under control, we see him gulping and thirsting for a drink whenever he gets uncomfortable. Note that when his wife says he can't meet his daughter, what does he do? He orders a drink. Now at his most uncomfortable, why wouldn't he find comfort in whatever was offered? Regarding his sense of justice, this really works against him in this situation. When confronted by the truth, he knows that he really shouldn't be able to see his daughter again. He's a killer and a liar, not someone deserving of reconnection. His own sense of justice vilifies himself and tells him that he does not deserve to hope for what he wants. And that is truly devastating, one of his best traits telling him that he's the worst. In writing, Richard and Yost is ultimately foreshadowing Tenma and Johan, the serial killer that the hero chases down. Richard shows the regret of taking the shot and the consequences of that, showing the outcome if Tenma had chose to shoot Johan in Ruinheim. Richard and Johan's encounter isn't a repeat of him and Yost, it's planting seeds for the ending of the series. We can also compare this moment to when Johan unlocks Nina's memories of the Red Rose Mansion. Johan helps bring out the truth behind her disturbed past, much like with Richard. What does Nina do? Immediately raise a gun to her head, only stopped by the intervention of Dr. Tenma. With Richard, no one came to his aid. Is it so unlikely that he jumped? That is our case. Richard's life was still tied up in the memory of Yoss's death, and all his progress was built on a lie. Once Johan revealed the truth, Richard lost his hope and caused him to jump. It is entirely possible that Richard fell back into alcohol while on that roof, clinging for any comfort that was available. With how strong we know Johan's manipulations are, we think the situation must have played out in a way where Richard takes his own life. Richard jumped. From an interview with Dr. Gillen in Another Monster. What is the truth, do you suppose? Did Johan murder Agent Brown? The truth is, I just don't know. But I do believe that Johan backed Richard into a corner with words. Johan is a man who can kill you with words. Richard always felt guilt about what happened with Stefan Yost, and I think Johan may have prodded him there. No, he must have. Well, detectives, those are the arguments and the evidence presented. We may never know the complete truth, but what is your takeaway? The death of Richard Brown, jumped or pushed? Cast your thoughts in the comments below. If I've missed any clues, feel free to add those too. Thanks for watching. This has been CG, and I'll see you Gs in the next one.